Happy Saturday. We're going to start cooking. I don't even have everything out yet. Check this out. We've got our ground meat. We've got barley. We've got stock. We've got tomatoes. We got more tomatoes. We got tomato sauce. We have carrots. We have onions. We have garlic. We have a massive cabbage. Yeah. We're going to start cooking today. Now, I was planning on doing it all today, but there's a lot of stuff that we're going to make. And we had a wicked ice storm, so I need one ingredient that I actually thought I had, but I don't. <laughs> so since I have to go and get milk anyway, we need to get some mozzarella cheese. So what we're doing today is all prep. We're going to get the meat cooked. We're going to make red sauce, which will be used for lasagnas. I'll tell you the whole menu here in a minute. We are going to make some soup. Well, actually, let's go right to the menu. We are going to make a hamburger, cabbage, and barley kind of soup. So it's actually pretty good. I've made it before. It's just a basic soup. So ground beef already cooked. We're going to throw a couple of jars of our turkey stock in there because I don't actually have beef stock in jars. A whole bunch of this massive cabbage. A couple of jars of carrots, possibly three. I'm not 100% sure yet. Some tomatoes. It's just going to get cooked and that's going in containers in the freezer. We're also going to be making lasagna with those little narrow noodles just for fun. Why not? We're going to make some shepherd's pie uh, and some meatloaves. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot what I was doing, but we have a lot of prep to do first. So let me tidy this up a little bit, move the jars and cans out of the way. We're going to get the meat on the tray and in the freezer. And then we have to start prepping ugh, a whole bunch of onions. I think we're going to use the food processor for that. Put my gloves on to spread this hamburger around today. <clears throat> so you guys have seen me do this before. Get a big sheet pan. I loan it with line it, sorry, with parchment because I find that the the meat does tend to stick a little bit more when you don't want it to. And put it on the tray and spread it out. So I got a combination of here of medium ground and lean ground beef, okay? And of course, had to go get the knife to open up the lean ground beef because they are vacuum sealed. All right. All right. So, I'm going to kind of mix this up a bit so I don't have all medium in one spot and all lean in another. There we go. Yeah, all right, so this is going to go in the oven. We'll take the meat separator to it a couple of times and... That way it'll be all cooked at once and no problems. It is time oh, to get some onions out. Alrighty. So we're not actually going to chop the onions on the board. We are going to clean them and put them right in the food processor because we need a lot of onions today. We actually do have one whole bag of onions still left. This bag is about halfway gone, but this one is a lot of the little ones. That's why I want to use this bag. The other bag's got some bigger ones. And then of course I do have a few large onions that I got from the farm when I did a couple of veggie orders in the past with Kathy. But I want to use up a lot of these little guys. Now a couple of them have already gone funky. But, yeah, well. I've been kind of pulling them out as they've been going. And it's mostly the Spanish onions. But that's okay. When you store onions, expect some 
not to make it, guys. And of course, as we all know, I don't have a proper cold pantry. The closet that I put these in actually stays pretty cool, even though it's beside the wood stove. Temperature-wise in there is always quite cool, so it's actually been a perfect spot for me to store these. Now, if I had just a standalone refrigerator, that would work too, but I don't, so they stay in the closet. I do know though, I don't think we're gonna be doing Spanish onions in the future. I think it's gonna be straight up yellow onions, just because the yellow onions definitely store for me a lot better. And that makes me happy. So I've already put one batch of onions through the food processor. And this is all the onions that are left <laughs> in that one bag. That's it. So we have one bag of onions left. So yeah, we'll probably run out before the next batch of onions are actually ready to be harvested in the fall. But this makes me kind of happy. All right. Oh, I'm going to cut more onions and wash my face and then we'll get into the garlic. It's time for the garlic. So I'm actually going to use two of the smaller heads. Well, actually, I could use some of these singles. Woo, wait a minute. We have sproutage. All right, I guess he's going to go somewhere else. Let's see, there's another single. Do we have any other singles in here? Yep, yeah, one more, there we go. So a small head and three little singles. And I think he's gonna go in a pot. Might as well. Oops, this might be one of the dead heads. Just a second, yeah. That's one of the dead heads. Unfortunately, you run into that. But these guys, if you don't have one of these, oh my gosh, they're fabulous. Check this out. And it quite literally takes everything off. So like I said, these are the singles. So these are the ones that really didn't develop. We're just going to trim the bottoms off of all of these and pop them right in the food processor here with the last of our onions. All right, I'm going to go pulse these up. One job done, on to the cabbage. All right, cabbage time. So this is actually that great big cabbage that I bought quite a while ago that was cracked. And I mean, we just didn't get around to eating it. Now the majority of the soup, I mean, it's going to be a cabbage hamburger soup. So there's gonna be a fair amount of cabbage, but we're gonna prep that first. Like I said, it's all prep day. And it's going to be one really big pot of soup. <laughs> one of the good things about cabbage, if you do have one spot that my camera shut off, sorry. But as I was saying, even if you have a cabbage that's got one spot that's a little bit funky looking, you can just cut it out. It's all you need to do, it's great. All right, one more, one more slice off of this cabbage. That might be enough. I guess we'll find out. Well, maybe not. I don't know. If we need more, once I actually add all this in, it's really easy just to cut more. All right, guys, this is all the ground beef for the shepherd's pies, the lasagna and the red sauce and for our soup. So that works out to be about, what, a little over two kilos of ground beef before it was cooked. 
Now I did drain the fat and the liquid and stuff halfway through and broke it all up. So this just needs to get cold. Now it's on to soup and red sauce. All right, here are our two big pots. So I've got them on the two big burners. We're gonna get a little bit of oil in these. I also grabbed the pork and the beef here for our meatloaves, but I only did that so we could put some of our garlic and onion mix in there. So we're gonna put a little bit of garlic and onion in there. And I'm gonna put this back in the fridge real quick. A Little bit of oil in both. All right, this one is the soup. This one here is the red sauce. And this is the shepherd's pies. But we won't be putting those together till tomorrow. All right, some. Frozen peppers are going in the red sauce now so they can thaw out and sweat out with the onions and garlic. Okay, so the onions and garlic for the soup are good, so we're going to add some of the ground beef now. I know for such a big pot of soup, it doesn't seem like a lot of ground beef, but for what we're eating, I want more of a veggie soup, of course, so it works out. It's actually almost a pound, so not too bad. First things first, two jars of stock. Yes, I know it's turkey stock, but hey. Flavor is flavor, right? And of course, I'm gonna make a mess, because it's me. Tidy that up, there we go. We're adding a really big can of diced tomatoes. So it's a 796 liter or milliliter can or 28 ounce jar or 28 ounce can of tomatoes and a half can of water. There we go. Now comes the seasoning part. couple of bay leaves, some thyme, some oregano, and of course my parsley. Because I like parsley. Now one of the reasons why soup was on the menu for um, a freezer day is that I have some just random jars of broth that need to be used up as well so that's actually a chicken broth and this other one is called a nourish broth now it's basically a veggie but it tastes good I'm not going to be able to use all of that but it's getting there and one more jar of water I think so what do they say in that movie should have got a bigger boat. <laughs> oh, wow. I guess we should have used the stock pot for the sauce. Well, let's get all the herbs and stuff in here and see if we have to move it. So we have got basil, fair amount of basil this time. Fair amount of oregano. We are adding this um, chili and garlic spice to this one. It's not going to be spicy, but it gives it a nice flavor. Of course, our parsley. And we're adding actually some garlic powder and onion powder to this one. 
because hey, it's sauce. There we go. All right, stir this all in. We'll let it start simmering. I did not add any pepper or salt because we are using canned tomato products. So there's actually salt in them already. But when we get ready to make our lasagnas and get the sauce in containers, we'll test it then. That one's gonna be a tight fit. All right, I'm gonna let these simmer and then clean up my mess. That soup has simmered for a bit. So we're gonna put the cabbage in and the barley in. I'm gonna go and get the frozen peas. So that's about a cup of frozen peas. This is a lot of cabbage. <laughs> oh my. I might have to get bigger pots. All right, let's get this cabbage in there. I can tell you though that this soup already smells really good. And probably not quite, eh, not quite three quarters of a cup of barley. Now don't forget, we still have two jars of carrots that I wanted to put in here, but I don't know if there's enough room. There should be enough room. It'll be drained. All right. Leave that to simmer. The sauce as well, by the way. I did taste it. No salt required at all. Oh. But that still has to simmer for quite a while yet, so. Don't have quite enough room for the hamburger yet. Meatloaf time. So. We're just doing a combination of ground pork and ground beef. And it's kind of more like an old school meatloaf that we're making. So we're gonna put in a couple of eggs. Try not to get the shells in, of course. There we go. Now, if you've got good stale bread, soak the bread in some milk and use it for breadcrumbs and binders and things, but I don't have any good stale bread right now. So that means we're using breadcrumbs. <laughs> it's about a half a cup at the moment. If I need more, I will put more in. Now these are Italian breadcrumbs, so there's actually cheese and stuff. We're adding some parsley. Believe it or not, a little bit of mustard. I know it sounds weird. Trust me, like a tablespoon, that's all you need. We're adding some ketchup because the little bit of sugar and the sweetness from the ketchup actually does make it taste really good. So it's about a half a cup of ketchup, some good old fashioned Worcester sauce. I like Worcester sauce. This may take a minute. Some black pepper. And this is one of the few times I'm using the iodized salt. So you guys know I usually cook with the straight up kosher salt. That's about a teaspoon and a half of salt total. Because the iodized salt, you do need iodine in your diet from time to time. Let me get some gloves and we'll make a mess. This one I salt stained, do not ask me how. But these two are gonna go in the freezer and then what's left is gonna go in this one for dinner. Get in there, don't do this dainty, you know, spoon thing I mean ah. so one of the best parts about doing freezer meals and cooking is getting your hands dirty <laughs> that looks good it actually smells really good for raw meatloaf there we go that's all there is to it so let's get some in these little guys first make sure I get the same amount in everybody the last one will be a little loaf shape in this guy. And we'll have this one for supper. All right. See, this is why I wear gloves. <laughs> All righty. 
Okay, I'm gonna go put this in the fridge first and then I'll show you how these are gonna get wrapped for the freezer. So we're using a little bit of plastic wrap first. Just a little piece, don't need very much. And that is what's going to give me that really good seal on the meatloaf, see? So the first one is down really, really, really tight. Works great. Now we're gonna do a second one. Yeah, I know, it seems like overkill, but I wanna make sure that it's not gonna get any freezer burn under any way, shape, or form. That one's just a little bit bigger. Let's cover this other one because I have kitties curious with the smell of meat. And now we're gonna cover them up with a little bit of aluminum foil. This time though, I'm gonna actually write on the tin foil before I put it on, because I don't wanna poke another hole. And then this tin foil, tin foil, duh, it'll get used again when we cook them, because we'll just cover that up with the tin foil when we're ready to cook. One freezer meal done. I'm going to go put these in the freezer and we'll go check the sauce. Okay, so I've come to the conclusion I need bigger pots. Here's the first jar of carrots. I don't know if we're going to get them both in there because we still have to add some more water to this. Oh, I think we can get that other jar in there. Alrighty. So I drained the first jar of carrots, but I'm not draining the second. We're gonna use that water. Here we go. I tasted the broth. I have to admit, this tastes really quite good. There we go. I said there's not a lot of beef in it but more than enough for what we need let's try the barley and see if it's cooked almost this won't need much longer the tomato sauce I have shut off because I don't have enough room in this pot for all the ground beef so we're gonna have to put the lasagnas together a little bit differently tomorrow but we have to finish this because I need this pot for mashed potatoes yet so we can finish our prep for tomorrow. The soup is cool enough, it's still pretty warm, but it's cool enough I can get it into the containers. So let's get that done. Now I did something silly as well, is I had all these old yogurt containers and things, which you guys know, and I accidentally recycled the wrong ones. So I've got three big ones, sorry, two big ones, and three slightly smaller ones. So then when I got any soup left, I'll have to figure out what we're gonna put it in. So this soup is really, really, really thick. Well, not really thick, but there's a lot in it, but not a lot of broth, you'll notice, because when we do actually eat it, we do add a little bit more liquid to it. I can tell you though, it tastes really good. I am really happy with how this came out. Well, there we go. We have two of the larger ones, three of the smaller ones, and one big Rubbermaid container here. This one is gonna be a lot more than in these, but that's okay. And there's actually some left over, so Freddie has lunch tomorrow, even though that wasn't really intended. I'm going to clean this mess up, wash this pot out, because we have a lot of potatoes still to peel, cook, and mash for tomorrow. Last job of the day with the freezer meals. I'm going to go to town on these potatoes, get them all boiled up and mashed so they're cold and ready for tomorrow. Last task of the day, boiling and mashing. Oh, copious amounts of potatoes. 
Oh, I made a big mess. <laughs> but we have lots and lots of hot mashed potatoes. And some more in here. I put about half of these in the big pot just to fill it up. So these I have to cool down. I'll go in the fridge. <laughs> Man, this is a mess. The sauce is cold now, so I'm going to get that in the fridge. And then tomorrow, we will be putting together lasagnas and shepherd's pies. I just kind of want to dip a big old fork in those potatoes, though. So the mashed potatoes, pretty easy. Mashed them. Added a... Well, the... I can't really give you measurements because uh, it's two different pots. But all I put in them was butter, milk, dried parsley, and some granulated garlic. That was it. No salt, no pepper. We've done a lot of other stuff today, too. This chick's tired. Dinner is in the oven. Time to call it a night. Time to continue with shepherd's pie. So this is the last of the onions and garlic that we chopped up. Of course, I put them in a little bit too early because the pan's not quite ready yet. But that's okay. All right, so we will get these going and then we will get the ground beef in. We're also putting in the last of the frozen peas from the garden from last year. Two jars of carrots. These are gonna be tasty. Shepherd's pies are really kind of easy. You can put whatever you want in the bottom of a shepherd's pie. Now I've never done yet a traditional one and we've talked about it before, and Fred and I have talked about it, which is like lamb and things. Well, I've seen two kinds of traditional with beef and lamb, not ground beef like I do because, you know, I just find ground beef easier. But one, lamb's expensive. And two, if you don't cook it right, it just doesn't come out right. So, you know. Maybe someday we will. I'm hoping to get six shepherd's pies because of the amount of potatoes that we have. If not, we'll see how much I get in each tray. If I only get four, that's all right too. So, Because frequently I've been putting too many potatoes on and it just, you know, it doesn't have that nice gravy kind of bottom that I like. <laughs> There's a couple of onion peels I just noticed in here. I'm not going to worry about that too much. Alright, those onions are sweated down. Let me get our carrots out of the way. And ground beef time. So I still haven't put the ground beef in the sauce yet for the lasagna, but we are going to do that a little bit different today, actually, because that pot is nowhere near big enough. Now, there is some fats and stuff in this hamburger, so that's going to work out well, too. I'm going to put the rest of this ground beef in the fridge for our lasagnas. Now, I've seen people use a tomato base for shepherd's pies. I've seen people use the um, onion soup mix, which is a fabulous way to do it because you get some wonderful flavor. I've also seen people just sear the meat so they get that nice caramelization and then they use that for the flavor. We are going to cheat a couple of different ways. We're going to use our powdered broth mix. We're also going to use some of that nourish broth that we put in the soup and some more chili flake and garlic because this stuff puts wonderful flavor in everything. We're not going to add any additional salt because this thing's salty enough. All right, let's let this heat through and let some of that fat come out of the beef here. Oh, there we go. It smells good and all it is is Ground beef, onions, and garlic. Is that crazy or what? All right. Add our chili flakes and garlic mix. I'm actually adding some of this nourish broth dry 
because I like how it tastes when it kind of fries. I don't know why. It just adds to it. It's crazy. I didn't put a lot, though. Now we need to add the peas at this point and let it simmer for a bit. Now this water will boil down a little bit, so... And then, of course, once we put the carrots and everything in, too, we will have a beautiful base for our shepherd's pie. So now we're going to add some of this beef stock mix. That's uh, about two teaspoons. Like I said, we're not going to add any added salt to this at all. Bay leaves are our friends. Tuck a couple of bay leaves in there. All right, this is going to sit and simmer, guys, for, well, to be honest, at least a half an hour. That is perfect. All right, time to cry. Actually, I'm going to thicken it up first, and then... Mmm. That's tasty. You grab bay leaves, if I can find the other one. Where's the other bay leaf? There was two. Oh, found it. Found the bay leaf. So we're going to thicken these with cornstarch, but I'm going to use the carrot water for the cornstarch. Why waste all the goodness, right? Now, normally I'd thicken them with flour, but flour... Sometimes I end up having too much liquid and I don't want that today. We've got lots of good liquid in here. So I'm not going to use that other beef base that I have to make it darker or anything because it does have salt in it too and I don't want to add any more salt than we already have with the actual beef stock base that we used. Alright, let this sit for a minute and cook drain the rest of our carrots. There we go. And garden carrots, garden peas. Yeah, I know I'm not using farm beef for these, but for us it was more along the lines of cost efficiency for a few things, so we didn't. But I can tell you that <laughs> looks good already. Just makes me want me to put some on a plate and eat it. All right, turn that off. Let's get our trays made, guys. Woo, made a mess. There we go. This is my mess rag. So I got three pound trays this time. All righty, let's get it in. I should have enough, whoops. Get that out of the way. And three good scoops in each one. I hope. Well, I'm gonna do two scoops first and then we'll go from there. Oh yeah, we're good. Ha ha. Three scoops. Three scoops. And three scoops. Yay! We got four shepherd's pies. This is where it's gonna be a little bit different from when we've done it in the past. Before, I've just let them get cold. Now the potatoes are cold, so if I put them on top of these just when they're just cold, they're gonna sink. I'm actually gonna freeze them. They will be solid, and then we'll put the potatoes on top and then get the potatoes frozen and in the freezer. So I'm gonna put these in the freezer and I gotta charge the battery. Balance the cheese over there for a moment. All right, so here are our lasagna fixings. All right, first things first, we're gonna put a scoop of sauce on the bottom of all of them. So I told you before, or yesterday, I guess I should say, I have no idea, it was just yesterday. <laughs> So the pot was too small for me to put all the ground beef in, but we're going to use the ground beef as just an addition to the layers. 
and go from there. Now I'm cheating. I decided not to use the small narrow noodles. I'm actually going to use oven ready ones because ah, there we go. They need to be used up. And I have a whole box. So put the bottom two in. I don't even remember why I had these anymore. But they were up there. And being that as we're cleaning out pantry and using things up, now's the time to use them up. Now, to be honest, if you've never used oven ready lasagna before, to be honest, they're pretty easy to use. I've used oven ready cannelloni before. Best idea ever, just so you know. All right, next scoop of sauce. A little bit of a shake and a shimmy. Oh, this one needs a little bit more. There we go. Now, the things about oven ready, though, is make sure you put enough sauce on these guys. Not enough sauce. It just doesn't come out as good as you'd expect. There we go. Now, we're going to put a layer of ground beef. I'm a little shaky today, so I think we're going to do it. do it by the handful. This is actually going to be the only layer of meat that I'm putting in these. Just so you guys know. There we go. Do we have enough everywhere? Yeah. Just tap it on down. Uh, we'll put a tiny bit more. You know why? Because we can. Let me put the rest of this beef in the fridge and wash my hand. All right. Now some cheese on this layer. There we go. And a little bit of shaker cheese. Squish that down. All right, time for the controversial addition to mine, according to my family. <laughs> this is that spinach layer that I put in mine for my extra iron content. Sorry to all you Italians out there, but we all do as we need to do, right? So this one for this whole layer for all four is a 500 gram tub of cottage cheese, about a cup of Parmesan cheese, there is some parsley in here, quite a bit of black pepper. And you know those little frozen pucks of spinach? There's four of those. So like I said, I know it's a controversial layer, but for me, this is exactly what I need. Okay, so on top of this, we're going to just Scatter on another layer of sauce. Doing it a little bit different layer wise this time because we are using those no bake noodles. And now all these pieces will go on the top. Just kind of fit them in where they fit. Hmm. This part doesn't have to be pretty, guys. So no bake noodles, they tend to spread out quite a bit too, so don't worry about it. A good couple of scoops on each one. This one could use a little bit more around the edges. There we go. The last of our mozzarella on the top. <laughs> All right, not my neatest work. But then again, when have I ever been neat? All right, let's give them a little bit of a tap down. There we go. I did not use a full five noodles on each one. I still have four left. Oh well. Maybe I'll do another one for a cheater dinner. All 
right. And a little bit of Parmesan cheese. So I'm gonna put the lids on these and then I'm gonna get a small container. We're gonna do those last four noodles just in one more. I don't have that cottage cheese layer in the middle, but that's okay. And like I've told you before, don't worry if it sneaks up around the edges like this one does, because it actually helps quite a bit when it comes to sealing it. I know, weird, isn't it? So by the time you get it all in there, and sealed up, less chance of freezer burn. So if you can't get any air in it, you're not gonna get any freezer burn. That's basically what I'm trying to say. All right, I have a couple of these little guys here that don't have any tops. Let's see. Last of this block of cheese. Alrighty, there we go. This one I'll cover in some tin foil and get in the freezer. This cheese though is not going to go to waste. I'll figure out something to do with it. All right, I'm gonna put these guys in the freezer and that is now lasagna done, soup done, meatloaf done, and leftover sauce for just a random pasta night. Only thing left is the shepherd's pie and they're almost ready. It is time to put the potatoes on the shepherd's pie. So I am quite literally just gonna dump it on there and spread it out. <laughs> So these ones are not like the vegetarian or partly vegetarian like we did the last time. They are far from vegan or vegetarian. You could easily make a vegan shepherd's pie, by the way. Lots of good veggies, beans, red lentils, anything like that for good protein. Some vegetable stock to help make the sauce. No butter or milk in the potatoes and a good vegan shepherd's pie, easily done. But as you guys know, I am a meat person. One, because it gives me the iron that I need. Yes, I know I can get iron from a lot of veggies, but for me, I just find it easier with meat. <laughs> All right, get the hands in here and spread this around. And I have a lot of potatoes left. Now, believe it or not, guys, I could actually put these potatoes in small containers and still freeze them. Mashed potatoes tossed in the freezer actually works out really well because you can take them out, put some cheese on top, and just toss them in the oven. It's very good, just so you know. This is why I froze the base first. So much easier to squish the potatoes down and they don't sink to the bottom. Oh, this one needs some more. Just a minute, hold on, here we go. Put the lids on. I still have these on the trays. I'm just gonna slide the entire trays back in the freezer where they were. And then we'll stack them up once the potatoes are frozen. We have one more thing I made today. Ho oh, ho, it's still hot. I'm gonna put that in the fridge next. So I made some rice pudding. Needed to make some rice pudding, because hey, I'm still eating anything and everything out of the pantry. The only thing that I bought this weekend was milk. Milk. 
are some great sales. I did not go to the sales. So this rice pudding, I'll link the recipe down below. I have basmati rice, I have milk, I have coconut milk, mine's the powdered, but I have raisins, I have nutmeg, I have cinnamon, I don't have cardamom, but what I used was apple pie spice instead. And just saying, this tastes good. So total meals were 17. Four lasagna, four shepherd's pie, three pasta sauce, which I know wasn't a full meal, but three pasta sauce. So that's four, eight, 11, <laughs> two meatloaves, 13, and four soup. Yeah, I know technically I have three small containers, so kind of counting those three is just one. So 17 and a half, does that work? <laughs> anyway, like I was saying, freezer meal, we have the freezer back. I am so happy that the freezer is back. I can actually make some good, healthy, filling foods without having to go to the store all the time, getting a lot of processed anything, and yeah, healthy food, tasty food, good for me. Yeah, every now and then I know we do buy that frozen pizza, stuff like that. Try to make things as simple for Fred as I can because, like I said, and like you all know, he can't cook. Well, he probably could if he tried hard enough, but then frustration sets in and it goes downhill real fast. You guys don't want to see that. But if I hand him a shepherd's pie or a lasagna with the instructions on the top, he is perfectly good to go. Heat and serve. So, cheater processed food. <laughs> Alrighty guys, I'm going to get my rice pudding in the fridge cooling down and I'm going to call it a day because this weekend between everything else we've been doing around the house, this chick's tired. <laughs> anyway, everybody have a fabulous day. Have a fabulous evening. Have a fabulous morning, whatever time of day it is for you. And we'll see you next time as we continue on with our simpler life here on PEI. Bye for now.